Madam Presiding Officer, good afternoon. It gives me great pleasure to always present in this honorable house. To my colleagues, I thank you for your unwavering support. To the electoral district of Bonaccord and Crown Point, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to always represent you. Madam Presiding Officer, it gives me great pleasure to join this debate this afternoon, both in my new capacity as the Secretary in the Division of Community Development, Youth Development and Sports, and as the proud representative of the Electoral District of Crown Point. As I reiterate each year, the budget debate is not an exercise to be taken lightly. It lays the framework for the development of the island throughout the upcoming fiscal year. Madam Presiding Officer, I stand here before my colleagues and the people of Tobago with great pride and hope knowing that I have the privilege of contributing to Tobago's developmental potential. We must understand that the fiscal waters that this administration finds itself in, we have had to be nothing short of constitutional magicians and administrative geniuses. I must say that with a leader like the Chief Secretary, the Honorable Farley Chavez Augustine, we are all motivated to deliver to the people of Tobago without excuses. <laughs> Madam Presiding Officer, before delving into the plans and goals for the upcoming fiscal, let me remind my confused friends on the other side of some strides that this administration have been able to make while being in a fiscal chokehold from our friends in central government. The improvement made to social aid in Tobago has been the largest in history. We have improved the aid received by Tobago intellectuals, as well as major upgrades to several sites and address infrastructural challenges under our purview, which the administration before us seemed to have forgotten while they fed at the political financial buffet at the expense of Tobago's development. Yes. I listened carefully to the minority rinse out our ears for as long as Cow was coming home, and that was very difficult. <laughs> it was funny that he mentioned no clear achievement came out of the last fiscal. Need I remind him of the countless desperate attempts to stop productive development with court action? By the way, Secretary James, the road and the roundabout looking good. We're coming to come. Yes. Madam Presiding Officer, even the dead Ray Charles can see that this administration has delivered. But when you are busy carrying out Trinidad's orders, how can you see the development that, that's taking place? The minority leader spends more time filing FOI requests through his minions. But when you spend more time trying to please your handlers in Trinidad, you cannot see our achievements. Maybe I should ask the goodly Dr. Fate to schedule an optical appointment for the minority, <laughs> thus adding him to the list of successful eye-saving operations. This administration has done more in two and a half years than the previous administration in 21 years. But again, but again, the minority is at a loss due to the fact that he's a greenhorn to representational politics. And I want to address something as well. And I want to encourage the minority to not be like a certain reporter and take comments from a fake page and bring it in the public space. I, I, make, I heard him make mention about the job done at Coco Reef with the funding. And he always comes with a figure of three million. News for you, my friend. That's not the figure. You have friends and police working in the division that pass the information. You can always ask them what's the cause of that figure. project. Yep. And if you take a careful look, we have had rainfall for about the past two, three months. Right. Has there been any flood in there? No. Can we keep any not say swim fest or swim line there? <laughs> but I know of a place in Trinidad called Port of Spain <laughs> where we can keep a big river line there. <laughs> Ma Madam Presiding Officer, this administration has taken this island out of darkness on the theological basis of let there be light, and that was possible with the island's largest lighting program. Yes. Big up, Polly and Naya. 
Madam Presiding Officer, in consideration of the overarching framework for the development of Tobago, and as the world grapples with a myriad of changing realities, including low birth rate and population decline, we must acknowledge the need to maintain a people-centric focus in our development. Madam Presiding Officer, permit me to elaborate further on what the division has achieved to date and the impact we have had on the people of Tobago as we adopt the People's Division. Madam Presiding Officer, we acknowledge that the development of community spirit begins from within. For example, our recent Father's Day initiative, the Man Cave, which celebrated fathers in the division. To this end, the division has taken several steps to reignite the internal camaraderie from within, which will serve as a catalyst for the entrenchment of true community development throughout each electoral district on the island of Tobago. Madam Presiding Officer, I want to be the first to acknowledge the stellar contribution of my predecessor, Assemblyman Terence Baines, and the team at the division for the ex for the extensive work that was put into the development of a solid plan to put our communities on a path to sustainable development, addressing the socio-economic realities of our people, with a view to improving lives and livelihoods and keeping the promises we made to the people. Madam Presiding Officer, therefore, with univocal pride, I take the time to mention a few of the defining parts of the successes achieved under the, the Division of Community Development, Youth Development, and Sport. Under the Community-Based Environmental Protection and Enhancement Program, CPEP, we provided economic relief to some 600 community residents in our 15 electoral districts who are now employed in the program. Following our restructuring of the program, successfully improving efficiency in the operations of the program. It was a pleasure to see my people in CPEP being able to do more with an increased salary before the minimum wage increase from central government, which just goes to show that we are a caring administration who value our people and their daily efforts. And before I go on, Madam Presiding Officer, the minority ranted and raved about 10 on 10 off. Is this the first time we have had 10 on 10 off in this space? 1970. My grandmother always said to me, half a loaf is better than no loaf. At least we are trying to provide and put food on the tables of homes in Tobago. And we don't have to do what they do in Trinidad, where we see Cobb one man fighting for sponge cake. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Presiding Officer, the program is now fully engaged in community cleanup exercises litter eradication, and environmental beautification projects in over 37 communities to the extent that these communities are visibly and aesthetically pleasing in most instances and free from major health hazards. Madam Presiding Officer, in community development, the Vocational Skill Development Program saw a 44% increase in participants in 2023 attracting 1,370 persons and a further 43% in 2024, enrolling 1,950 persons in 31 skilled areas that will benefit 35 communities. The division, in collaboration with the Division of Finance, has already made plans to roll out an extensive tracer study to measure the extent of the impact and derived economic benefit of the program. Madam Presiding Officer, the plans to transfer the management of our community centers back to the communities, it was essential to first take the time to retool and revitalize the existing councils to ensure they were adequately prepared to manage community assets. In that regard, Madam Presiding Officer, 36 of the 39 councils are fully functional, with most actively participating in the ongoing capacity building program. This achievement provides a clear pathway for the implementation of the intended plan to resource communities through the Electoral District Development Fund and support communities in transitioning to full management of the community assets. Madam Presiding Officer, in sporting development, the building of the capacity of the associations who manage sport on the island 
receive focused attention, providing direction and financial resources to support improved athletic performance in various disciplines. We continue to see the need for development in this area, not only in the interests of developing the sport itself, but also as a vehicle for improving the lives and livelihoods of our youth and increasing their development potential. Our hosting of the Commonwealth Games provided an impetus for change, and the division under the astute leadership of Assistant Secretary Clark is working tirelessly to actualize the vast potential of our athletes. <laughs> Madam Presiding Officer, reigniting the community spirit and sporting activities that has significantly dwindled in previous years remains priority on our agenda. And I am happy to report that since assumption of my duties, I have, I have successfully hosted numerous events in the community, inclusive of the Nazi Fast Five sports event, held over a three-day period, inclusive of, inclusive of wind ball cricket, netball, and this famous small goal football competition. Madam Presiding Officer, in the Division of Community Development, Youth Development and Sport, we have had some successes encountered some obstacles, and we are ready to go. We learned from Henry Ford, who said, obstacles are those frightful things you see when you take your eyes off the goal. Madam Presiding Officer, with a clear focus on our goals, the Division of Community Development, Youth Development and Sport has adopted a more targeted delivery mechanism. By collaborating more closely with communities and key stakeholders, we are, com we are committed to implementing initiatives aimed at improving the current socio-economic conditions, unlocking the development potential of our communities and our path to developing sustainable communities. Madam, Madam Presiding Officer, having said that, permit me to provide a little more detail on the measures outlined in the Chief Secretary's budget statement. Oh. Mm -hmm. Implementation of the integrated SPARC, Step Up, Take Charge, Innovate, Restore, Monitor and Evaluate, STIRMI, Operational Plan of the Division. STIRMI is designed to create safer communities and environments for us to live, play, work, and grow in. The following projects and initiatives will be rolled out in 37 communities across the island on a phased basis under STIRMI at a budgeted cost of approximately $38 million. The division will ignite a spark through the implement implementation of our Spark IMS digital platform and take steps to fully digitize our operations to improve efficiency in the delivery of our services. A ma massive registration drive will commence soon to allow for the registration of all civil society organizations and individuals to facilitate improved access to our services. Under our Take Charge umbrella, we will execute an extensive capacity building program to assist our community, youth, and sporting organizations to take charge of the organizations and communities in a managed and coordinated response to crime and violence, and to promote the sustainable, sustainable development of our people. Organizations will be exposed to further training in understanding their roles and responsibilities, facilitating their NGO registration, financial management training, conflict re resolution and mediation, customer service, proposal writing and project management, and managing their NGOs and CBO. We will also conduct parenting and family training with expanding support services in communities. A targeted 20% of families across the island stand to benefit in phase one of the program. Training will include parenting, household budgeting, and financial literacy. Planning for retirement and other areas pertinent to supporting our parents in managing their households in these difficult times.
We would introduce a community-based management system that will be resourced through collaboration with civil society organizations, the private sector, and the THA. Implement the Electoral District Fund to activate the THA's commitment to inclusive and participatory governance and ensure that community-based development initiatives are funded. In fiscal 2025, we have budgeted $3 million for this program with an allotment of 150,000 per electoral district and in the remaining 750,000 earmarked to meet administrative costs based on available resources at the time. It is anticipated that this program will deliver community-based solutions to some deep-seated community challenges. Under our innovative umbrella of programs, the division will expand the community-based vocational skills training program as a feeder into the TVET Academy, an institutional strategy for developing our vocational skills and handicraft industries to satisfy local market demand and boost exports. Currently, we are refurbishing the handicraft outlet at Mount Irving for direct sale of Tobago's handicraft products. In fiscal 2025, we intend to pro provide introductory level training to well over 2,000 participants in more than 40 skilled areas. Madam Presiding Officer, it is no secret that the Tobago House of Assembly provides employment for over 60% of the Tobago's working population. With this understanding, we intend to develop the entrepreneurial aspirations of our youth by providing avenues for the formation of cooperatives, as well as establishing strategic linkage with financial institutions for the provision of seed capital for their businesses. Under the Step Up umbrella, the division will enact the Tobago Youth Empowerment Strategy, aimed at mainstreaming youth development priorities and, con on and concreting sustainable futures for our youth. The Youth Empowerment Strategy has four developmental pillars, which will receive our attention this fiscal. One, creating an en enabling environment for positive youth development in Tobago. Two, co-creating Tobago's sustainability futures for our youth. Three, prioritizing youth economic participation and empowerment. Four, creating safer spaces, peaceful en environments for all youth. We are about to complete the upgrades of existing sporting, community, and youth facilities and initiate a continuous program of maintenance, bringing all facilities to a minimum of 70% operational capacity with the intent of reaching full capacity within the next 18 months. Under the Restore umbrella, the division will implement the Tobago Community Safety Program with the tagline, when you are safe, I am safe as part of our crime prevention strategy referred to in the Chief Secretary's budget statement. So unlike those across the water, we won't have to do like Ola and say, let's pray. <laughs> the community safety program has several components and be, will be launched by the division as a matter of urgency. In this regard, $5 million has been allocated to the execution of this program. Madam Presiding Officer, in addition, we will conduct, conduct upgrade works to the Scarborough Community Center at an estimated cost of $2 million. The, the Scarborough Community Center in the past has been overlooked and is now in need of major repair. The upgrades to the facility is earmarked to improve the cohesiveness of the community, of Scarborough and environs, and foster camaraderie and collaboration to improve the opportunities for residents. Establish the Technical vocation, Vocational Education Training, TVET Academy. The Academy will provide for CVQ and TTNVQ certification at all levels. We are currently examining appropriate locations, including the Old Monk St. George Youth Campsite, recognizing the importance of the training of our skilled persons to meet industry standards. Launch the Youth Agricultural Training Program and Tobago Youth Shade House Project to introduce and upskill our young people in modern agriculture practices to boost food production, processing, and export, and engender sustainable development practices. Discussions are well progressing towards the location of this project at the Cove Eco Industrial Park with a view to exponentially increase food production 
while building the capacity of our young people in this sector, contributing to enhance food security. This is premised on our understanding that a nation that can feed itself is well on its way to sustainable development. And who better to drive this than our young people? Implement the Active Involved Citizen Program to provide ongoing programs and support services at all community, youth, and sporting facilities to actively engage residents and cater to their personal growth and development. This program will be rolled out on a phased basis to start in four districts in fiscal 2025. Madam Presiding Officer, as I conclude this presentation, I wish to reiterate our unwavering commitment to the people of Tobago. The Division of Community Development, Youth Development and Sport remains steadfast in its mission to foster an inclusive, vibrant and resilient society as we work towards unlocking the development potential of our communities. Our strategic initiatives and investments are not merely about infrastructure and programs. They are about empowering our people, enhancing our communities, and unlocking the full potential of our youth and citizens. We are acutely aware that the journey towards sustainable development and improved socioeconomic conditions is not a sprint, but a marathon. It requires dedication, collaboration, and an unyielding focus on our goals. With the support of this esteemed house, our partners and the community, I am confident that we will achieve our vision of a prosperous and dynamic Tobago. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to my predecessor, Assemblyman Terence Baines, my able assistant, Assemblyman Wayne Clark, my dedicated administrator, Afisha Melville McKean, and my hardworking heads of department and team at the division for their continued contributions, unwavering support, and commitment to the communities we serve. Together with our partners and stakeholders, we have achieved significant milestones, and together we will continue to build on these successes. As we navigate the challenges and opportunities ahead, let us remain steadfast in our commitment to the development of our beloved island, ensuring that every Tobagonian has the opportunity to realize their full potential. In closing, permit me to say that with the financial restrictions put on us from central government, I am extremely proud of the creativity of this team to give Tobago a chance in this upcoming fiscal. There are many more plans to roll out as we move forward together. In the words of Henry Ford, Coming together is a beginning, staying together is progress, and working together is success. Let us embrace this spirit of unity and collaboration as we move forward, ensuring that every step we take brings us closer to a brighter and more prosperous future, prosperous future for all Tobagonians. Thank you, Ms. Madam Presiding Officer, and may God bless our beloved island of Tobago. I thank you.